Well, look, we're back on the little Fergie. We've done the distributor up, and we're going to go through replacing the distributor. So, if you remember when we pulled the distributor out, that's just grease. You remember when we pulled the distributor out, the rotor button was on the top there, and it was pointing straight in. And so, we know that when we put the rotor back on here, which I'll have to go and get, <laughs> bloody thing. Um, we, we can turn the distributor housing here and the distributor rotor will be going this way. This little knob is at the back of the rotor. The rotor actually points that direction, so the rotor will be pointing there. Now we know that at around 10 o'clock, that is where we want the points to open for number one. So to open her up on number one top dead centre. So, can you see the screwdriver? This screwdriver here. I've got a nice bright handled one with a quarter inch shank. Under your starter motor here, there's a little hole. And clean the little hole out and give it a twirl, make sure it's nice and clean. And you should be able to hold that backwards just a little bit of pressure and there's a hole in your starter motor or sorry in your flywheel that will give us 10 degrees before top dead center for our distributor here so how do we find that well we know the distributor goes anti-clockwise goes this way and it goes one three four two so we know our distributor was there so we're coming around to number one so if we hold the little bit of pressure on the screwdriver and we try and turn the engine over by hand with holding a bit of pressure there you can feel you can feel the screwdriver scraping against the flywheel so I'll just try and there it is there. And so you'll see it goes in a lot further all of a sudden. So at that point, we're getting ready for top dead center. So I usually wriggle it back and forth a bit. You can see there's just a little bit of movement there. That is 10 degrees before top dead center. So what's that got to do with this piece here? Well, let's go and have a look. If we take this cap out again, <clears throat> you'll remember that we had the distributor. We did the distributor up. Oh, stay in there, will you? We did the distributor up. <clears throat> Our points are already set, so look, to get this exactly on 10 degrees before top dead centre, you need to set your points to between 10 and 12 thousandths of a square inch. Mine are a little bit wider, so mine will be a little bit retarded. So that's okay, but at this stage we can put our test light on. Sorry, our, our distributor lead on. The test light's the next thing coming up, so that's why <laughs> that's why I'm thinking about the test light. We'll just get our trusty shifter and just nip that up. And also, at this stage too, it's a good point to do up these retaining bolts. Now, not up tight, just put them on because. When the distributor sits down onto them, or sits down in place, you can't get to them. So we'll do them up. Okay, I'll do those up just so we can still move the distributor around, and I'll come back in a second. Okay, there's a couple of things I've done. I've put the screws on here so we can still turn the distributor. 
I've just nipped these fellas up a little bit just to firm them up and so we don't have to go so far. And I've put the rotor cap on. The rotor cap has a little arrow in this instance to say that it goes anti-clockwise. So we put the rotor cap on. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, now with this screwdriver sitting in the hole, hook your test light up to the wire on the side of the distributor and earth it out. Now I'll see if I can get this so you can see it. Now we pull the ignition switch on so we have power and we slowly turn the distributor clockwise in this instance. Bang. You see that light come on? We'll go back Bang! <laughs> it's got spark alright. <laughs> now can you, I'm hoping that you can see that light comes on. Look what we're doing is the test light can't earth out because it's actually earthing out through the points at the moment. So the current's coming through your coil, straight through, it's coming in positive and out negative because I have this hooked up negative earth. Um, if, for instance, you had positive earth, this coil would be around the other way. Everything else works exactly the same. So, so I'll switch that off so I don't heat the coil up too much. So we have power from the ignition switch coming into the coil through the primary winding, out through here to your points. Now it's earthing out through the points at the moment. I'd like to get this where you can see the light better. But we're out in the sun at the moment, so there's not much we can do. If I keep the light in cover there, it might work. So, it earths out through the points at the moment. The minute that the points open, which is when we fire, the minute the points open, instead of earthing out through the points, the field drops and the test light comes on. So we'll try it again. Key on. Now we'll just turn this opposite direction to the to the rotor rotation. There. So that's where we're firing. That's 10 degrees before top dead center. Pretty easy, isn't it? I'll just have a quick look at this video and I'll make sure that you can see what I'm seeing. Right, I've just viewed the footage and I, I'm confident you can see the little green light come on here. So, what we know now is that at top dead centre, with your pointer in at top dead centre, your points are just opening at 10 degrees before top dead centre. That's your moment that you're firing for number one cylinder. And you'll see I've got a bit of a kick there before. <laughs> it's working fine. This coil's a bit dicky I think though, but it's a bit loose around the top there, which is never a good sign, so I will get another one and replace that, but that's beside the point for the moment. So we know that if we leave that distributor right where it is, we're firing a top dead centre. Now, if you're going to crank the tractor, crank it by hand, it's on your, you have advance and a heap of lines and retard, the story is that you loosen these screws and you go to the retard one line. So I'll just loosen this a little. Still a little bit tight. So so we go one line in it, and what that does, if if you're going to crank start it by hand, which we're probably not, and um, by moving it one degree there, so it's you have the middle line go one towards retard from there, then lock the screws up without turning your distributor again. So we lock that up there. 
So they're just firm at this stage. Now, we should be able to, at this stage, lock this clamp up without turning anything. So by retarding it, each each line there I've read recently is two degrees. So by retarding it, you're just making it a little bit easier to wind over on the starter and less chance of backfiring if you're going to crank it over. So the distributor's locked in place there. That can't move anymore. We're happy we're firing at number one. The points are opening no trouble at all there. So from this stage we can we can pop that dust cap on. Give it a bump with your 7 16 hammer. Put the rotor back on. And for the moment we're finished with that distributor. At this stage, before I get the leads and all that in the way, I'm going to pop these spark plugs out and we'll set the gaps on the new ones, put the new spark plugs in and away we go. Okay, at this stage I've got the old spark plugs out. Now we get the new spark plugs and always have a look at the gap. Make sure the gap's okay. We're getting quite a bit of shadow in the background but that shouldn't matter. We're just out in the sun at the moment. So. 32 thou is about what they normally are, so this one's a little bit less, we'll just see. These are hotter plugs I've bought too. Now that's 30 thou. Now what I do, make sure that's tight, if not just Bump it a little until we're okay. Then it goes. Next one. Thirty thousand good. See, that one's quite a bit tighter. And that can often happen in packaging and things like that, so. Yeah, that's good now. Now when you put your spark plugs in, just take them up firm by hand. You can put a little bit of oil on the thread if you choose to, to not have them stuck at a later date, but all the tractors I fiddle with I fiddle so they don't get too bad. Well, you can feel that's firm there. Just go about a half, about a flat, so a sixth of a turn. That's where it's firm. About a flat. That's where it's gone firm. About a flat. That's where it's got firm. About a flat. <coughs> Pardon me. So now we've done that, we can get our distributor cap on. So we'll sit him up here. I'll just sit him on like that. Bring the clip. I'll have to go and get the other clip. And the mower's coming past, so I'll have to switch off for a minute. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, before we forget, 
remove this. You don't want to go hitting the starter with that in there. I reckon that'd give you a bit of a surprise. So there's two different sorts of coils. The original coil had a screw in top with an acorn nut like this and you had an acorn nut on each and away you went but the more modern style type coils had just pushing in so that's what we're using on this coil then you make sure that's clean sometimes there's a little bit of solder over there still or a little bit of flux I've seen so that goes into the center and nice and tight this one here if we ever put another coil on with a screw in acorn nut which we probably will do in this case and um, we'll use that one so bring the bring a little rubber boot right down over it as far as you can to stop any moisture playing up with it this end here do the same There you go. Now on the leads, I like to start at number one. And with the, the two shortest leads, I go to one, three has to be a long one, four has to be a long one, and two is a short one. So we'll go in direction of rotation. Let's get the nut down, make sure that's clean. Started in the cap. And poke him on there. Yeah. I like to tighten that up now. Bring the boot over one by one. So that when we finish we know we're all all up to speed. <coughs> now with the firing order being one three four two, we know the rotor's going this way, so one, three. Well, I didn't check that, yep, that's good. Number three. I like to keep these wires neater than this, but they just don't want to do it for the video. <coughs> Number four. Clean that. And the other short one to number two. <coughs> Pardon me, it's getting breezy out here. It was sunny as anything, get a sunburn a minute ago. We've had a mower in the background, so it's gone now. Okay, bit of a mess to look at. Just try and tidy them up a little bit. So we have one, three, four, two. So if we turn the petrol on, we'll let the fuel go down and fill the car be up a bit, and we'll see if we can get a start out of it. That's what this whole video is about. We'll check the dipstick. Marks up here. Well, I have a water pump to put on this, but I can certainly start it and give it a quick run without worrying too much about that. Okay. Put my spanners out of the way. 
once again, check that you've taken the pointer out. Very important. We'll give it a bit of choke, eh? Spark still. She's alright. Might help if I turn the switch on, the ignition switch. I thought I'd turned it on, but I hadn't. I don't want you laughing too much. Okay, so we do have a good spark there. <coughs> we'll go around the other side, have a look at the carby while we're going. Now, we have fuel coming out of the carby, so that's good. So we need to open the jet up a bit, main jet that is. And open the idle screw a little. Okay, so we've got spark, <laughs> we've had, it, had a little run. So with a little run, I think we've just got to do a bit more of a carby tune-up. So I'll have a little fiddle and see how we go.
So there you go, we've got it running. I had to richen the carby up a bit. We'll try and start it on the gear stick once more. Okay, let's go for a drive. There you go, I need a spring to pull the throttle back to idle, but um, apart from that she's a goer, seems to start easy. We'll um, have to work through doing the water pump next. That'll be the end of, I think we're up to number 5, the TD20 get it going.